Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May 26, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com. Also, BettingAngle.us. Let's talk about Jack Catterall's victory in the rematch over Josh Taylor. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I have the official DAZN highlights from this fight in my favorites folder here on YouTube. I believe it's important to figure out what fighter had the edge and how that can play going forward. Catterall delivered uh, for my premium subscribers. I think I did a premium video on this fight, picking Catterall. Let's talk about what happened here. Uh, I thought Catterall won the fight. Catterall is the more advanced fighter than Josh Taylor, right? They're both southpaws. I want people to look at the highlights from the fight. You'll notice that Catterall can hide his upper body. Now, what do we mean by that, right? Catterall is the shorter fighter. More importantly, his balance, and it's phenomenal, his balance allows him to duck low. You'll notice he has his right hand draped around his waist. I am not kidding. He has his right hand draped around his waist. He has his left hand right above it, his shoulder. His right shoulder is in Josh Taylor's chest. Right? That's the angle. The right shoulder lines up with Josh Taylor's chest. The way Catterall is standing, it's very hard for Josh Taylor to land a left hand. And understand, Taylor is left-handed. Right? And it's very hard for Taylor to land shots to Catterall's body because Catterall has his hands protecting his body. In other words, Catterall like Floyd Mayweather, let's name a great, is wearing body armor deep in the pocket. Taylor, by contrast, <clears throat> is more parallel to Catterall. Taylor, of course, has rabbit ear defense. His defense isn't as advanced as Catterall's defense is. Right? So Taylor is coming forward, taller man, He's hoping to use size and a two-handed attack to rough up Catterall, whose defensive construct already takes away Taylor's left hand. Right? Because Catterall's right shoulder is in Taylor's chest. And, of course, Catterall, like Larry Holmes... And this is very important, right? Larry Holmes talked about how he threw his jab from his waist, right? Holmes is probably the best jabber I know of. Understand you have a showcase here of Jack Catterall over 12 rounds throwing his jab from his waist. It's very hard for a taller fighter like Josh Taylor to time that jab. Right, so understand, Catterall is the better defensive fighter because he's wearing body armor, right? He is just more covered up. It's hard to find his upper body, particularly with his shoulder on an angle to Josh Taylor's chest. Let me also say, too, Catterall has the better back foot. He uses it a great deal. You'll notice that Catterall, in addition to hiding his upper body, is moving. Think about the coordination. It's not like he just stands there wrapped up. No, he's standing wrapped up while moving. And he always has his balance. And he seems to intuitively know where the ropes are. Right? He doesn't move into the ropes. He moves parallel to the ropes. This is advanced stuff. Right? Please 
don't get fooled by Catterall's facial expression. Catterall looks the same regardless of what's happening in the ring, right? This is different than, you know, let's say a Ray Leonard or a David Benavides, another guy where things are going well for him. You'll notice Benavides smile as the action's unfolding. No, this is the school of thought where you cannot tell whether things are going well for Catterall or poorly for Catterall by his facial expression. In fact, there's a moment of truth in this fight. It's at the end of the 12th round. The bell rings and Catterall looks like he's, you know, going to congratulate Taylor on a good fight. Then Taylor throws his hands up. And Taylor starts motioning to the crowd. And Catterall actually gets upset. His facial expression changes, right? Catterall gets upset and says something to Taylor. We don't know what it was. But the film makes it look like he sees Taylor throws his hands up. And he thinks, come on now, player. We both know I won this fight big. Right? Catterall clearly at the end of the 12th round thinks he is clearly the winner that this isn't an iffy fight where a guy throws his hands up to the crowd and Catterall thinks wow this guy thinks he won no no this is the fight Catterall thinks he has dominated well Catterall clearly wins the fight in my eyes let's just talk about that jab folks it's breathtaking his jab is his bedrock it opens up a lot his movement while he has his defense all covered up, his movement is spectacular. He's throwing the jab from so low that as Larry Holmes used to say about his jab, the other side doesn't know how to block it. Right? Catterall, the beginning of the fifth round, and it's on the highlight reel that's in my favorites folder here is simply breathtaking because Catterall's jab opens up the door for his quick combinations. Right? Catterall's left hand saves the day for him. But understand, the left hand is not possible without Catterall's jab. So, beginning of the fifth round, Catterall unloads with both hands. Right? The jab is the combination opener and it's clear that Josh Taylor who moves in straight lines compared to Catterall who is moving parallel to ropes and then is turning and twisting you notice that Josh Taylor cannot handle Jack Catterall's hand speed which is fast in other words Catterall is hiding quick hands combination punching and a mobile jab. It's not stationary. It's a mobile jab. Right? So let me just say that while you are following Catterall, looking for his body as an opponent, Catterall pivots, starts hitting you with jabs, then opens up with combinations, and you have nowhere to go. Right? As he steps forward and throws combinations, you're just getting battered. Now let's criticize Catterall a little bit. Catterall lands some big shots in this fight. Two of the biggest are two left hands in the 11th round. A round that Taylor's winning until he gets hit with a couple of bombs. Right now, I will say, Catterall... And it's a personality thing, and personalities are hard to change. Catterall is so convinced that you understand boxing like he does. Right? I think Catterall, who will stay in the pocket as you try to find his body, Catterall is so convinced that you, in the 10th row, understand that he's blocking the shots that even though he does not have a hand up, in other words, he has his right hand around his waist, he has his left hand draped across his body, 
even though he doesn't have his hands up like this, Catterall is so convinced that you see exactly what's going on, that he is not getting hit in the head, that he has his head tucked. That's how advanced he is. That Catterall, when he lands a home run, left hand, sometimes it's an uppercut, sometimes it's a hook, and Taylor is hit to the point where his back leg jumps off the canvas. Catterall is convinced that he's done enough to win the round. He is not the fighter who then steps on the gas and thinks to himself, I'm winning this fight, it's the 11th round, I've just hurt this man, let me close the show. Or, let me open up on the guy so much that it's clear to people that I had this guy on the verge of a knockout. Now understand the personality. This is a craftsman who hurts you and then thinks to himself, and this cost him in the first fight. And, the, and in the first fight, he got the knockdown, by the way, right? Uh, this cost him. He thinks to himself, okay, it's clear to everyone here that I have won this round. So I don't have to take the risk of closing the show. I'm outboxing this guy. I've hurt this guy. I don't have to stop this guy. Now, the reason it's important is he's at 140 pounds. And you have Teofimo Lopez, for example, who has won some questionable decisions, right? The Sander Martin fight could have gone either way from my seat, right? I thought Jermaine Ortiz beat him. I Okay, I understand, you know, there's a difference of opinion there. But what is beyond dispute is the fact that Teofimo Lopez is extremely popular in New York City, right? Teofimo probably has more market power than Jack Catterall. So if Catterall gets Lopez badly hurt and understand, Lopez has a problem against Southpaws who can move. Right, Catterall, Sander Martin and Jermaine Ortiz moved away from the pocket. Catterall has a skill set that would allow him to stay in the pocket. Right? If Catterall hurts a fighter like Teofimo Lopez as badly as he hurt Josh Taylor in the 11th round of this fight, right? Catterall might need to step on the gas. In other words, there are some venues where the local fighter is going to be given extra consideration by the judges. Folks, I'm not saying it should happen. I'm just saying that's the reality of boxing. Right? There are going to be some venues where you don't even understand the scoring. Right, I'm telling you, I saw that first. Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz fight, I have no idea how anyone would have Wilder winning the early rounds of that fight. But yet it happened, and I believe that fight was in New York City. Right, If I have a criticism of Catterall, it's simply that he doesn't let the crowd in. In other words, if Teofimo feels he's getting his way, you can tell by his facial expression. Right? If you're a Teofimo fan in the crowd, or if you're a judge asking the question of who's getting their way this round, and you see Teofimo's facial expressions, you see David Benavides's facial expressions, you'll think, okay, uh, Benavides thinks he has this round. Benavides is doing what he wants. With Jack Catterall, Catterall could be dominating. Catterall's facial expression is the same. I would also criticize Catterall just in terms of hurting guys and then letting them recover. Right? You're in the 11th round against the guy who was awarded the questionable decision the first time. You hit the guy with a home run left hand, then moments later you hit the guy with another home run left hand. Isn't this the round to make sure there's no questionable decision in the rematch? Catterall 
Technician. This is how technicians think. They're math guys, right? By the way, I typically bet on math guys. That's why I picked Brock Purdy to be the NFL MVP last year. Just food for thought. Catterall is too much math. This is that rare guy who's too much math. So Catterall has Taylor, in my opinion, badly hurt in that 11th round. What does he do? He assumes that you understand that he should be ahead on the scorecards. He lets the fight go to the 12th round. Right? He doesn't even run over to Taylor and just let his hands go to kind of let us know. This dude's semi-conscious. I'm going to come over here and flash some hand speed. Right? Understand there are many guys who will run over there and flash some hand speed thinking, hey, if I have the guy dazed, whether I'm hitting him hard enough for him to hit the canvas, maybe I can get the referee to pull the plug here. If I run over and I throw a combination and the guy looks like he can't block the shots. Folks, that's not how Jack Catterall is wired. This is the guy who is winning the round and then thinks, okay, everybody here knows boxing. That's a questionable assertion. Right? Because let's face it, you have a lot of casual fans who are just there rooting for their local hero. <laughs> right? You know, you might have a lot of, you know, guys from um, Josh Taylor's neck of the woods who are there saying, hey, let's root for our boy. Right? They might not appreciate the fact that Jack is blocking shots in the pocket. That as Taylor throws shots to hit Jack in the solar plexus, Jack has a hand down there. Right? So let's just say Catterall trusts the judges a little bit too much. I thought against Jorge Linares he could have gotten the stoppage. He let Linares back in that fight. Right? I thought here there were times where he badly hurts Taylor. I thought the 11th round, Taylor's a little desperate. Taylor starts the round fast. When Catterall lands that first left, I have no doubt that if Catterall was Nigel Bant, he would be thinking, hey man, I'm not even going to box this guy anymore. It's time for me to empty the cartridge. That's not how Catterall thinks. Let me just say too, that if you look at Comp CompuBox, both fighters landed more than 40% of their power shots. Now, Josh Taylor is facing Catterall most of the fight. And he's looking at Catterall. And he's trying to land power shots on Catterall. When you see that Catterall wearing body armor. In other words, folks, his lead right is around his waist. That's his jab hand. It's astonishing. That a guy with Catterall's style of defense is able to land more than 40% of his body shots while also outlanding Taylor in terms of jabs. In other words, Catterall's right hand, let's just think about it for a second, his jab hand, in addition to protecting his body, Catterall has the sequencing down where he's able to flash that hand and land an inordinate amount of jabs on Josh Taylor, who's trying to land to Catterall's body. In other words, Catterall knows when to hold them and when to fold them, when to play defense and when to throw jabs. And Catterall's landing a high percentage of punches. In other words, this is not the defensive fighter who doesn't land a lot of punches. No, dare I say this is a Floyd May Mayweather type. I'm not saying he's Mayweather. Right, but let's say a lot of his game is styled after Mayweather. This is a Mayweather type guy who lands a high percentage of his shots while also being defensive. So it's clear to me, and I understand Bob Arum's upset, I understand some people feel the scores were a little bit wide, 
right? I thought it's clear that Catterall wins the fight. We can debate the scoring. But I thought it's clear that Catterall wins the fight, more importantly, for our purposes here online. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Look at Catterall's defensive construct and ask yourself how both are possible. Right, Taylor is an offensive fighter. Look at how Taylor is on his front foot trying to be active. Is not neglecting Catterall's body. And look at how Catterall, unlike Jermaine Ortiz against Teofimo Lopez, look at how Catterall is able to stay around the pocket for stretches without getting hit hard. Probably the hardest hits Catterall has on his head the entire match are when the two guys clash heads a few times. Right, Taylor's unable to land a lot of meaningful headshots on Catterall, who is hanging around the pocket for stretches of the fight. Right, so Catterall, you need to view him as a very advanced fighter. Right, it would be interesting him against Teofimo Lopez. It would be interesting him against Jose Ramirez, because Ramirez almost certainly is going to try to throw volume in the pocket. I believe a fighter as defensively blessed as Catterall would be able to beat Matthias because, let's face it, Matthias is really an A-plus left hook and then not too much of a plan B, right? A guy like Catterall would be able to disengage that left hook from the opening bell. Right, so Catterall underrated in part because Catterall doesn't play that much to the crowd. Right, Catterall is a deliberate stranger. Right, you see his fights, you know, this obviously is not the first Catterall fight we saw. Right, this isn't the first Catterall fight we saw against Josh Taylor, for crying out loud. But yet we don't really know him. Right? It's hard to make a guy like this your favorite fighter. When the guy looks like he's waiting for a bus. But yet when you see the stuff he's doing in the ring, you understand. It's hard to find his upper body. He has an excellent jab that he's throwing from his waist. And even though his hands look dropped, they're actually wrapped around his body for defensive purposes. This guy might be the most advanced guy at 140 pounds. I'd love to see him against a puncher like a Gervonta Davis. Right, I know Davis is, you know, wants us to forget that he ever fought at 140, right? You know, we're supposed to believe now he's a 135 guy as if that Mario Barrios fight never happened. Okay, fine. But it would be interesting to see him against a puncher. Now, keep in mind, Davis, Southpaw, just like Josh Taylor, right? I'd be curious to see if Catterall could handle Davis's straight left, which is one of the best in the business, right? Let's just say, though, that in terms of boxing skills, Davis would have a lot more to deal with here than he did when he fought Ryan Garcia. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Ryan Garcia failed the B sample of his drug test. I'm not surprised. If he somehow, because this is boxing, because I've seen Conor Ben under investigation still have fights, if he signs to fight Jack Catterall, folks, that's an interesting fight. Because while Garcia has an A-plus level left hook, right, just like Matthias, he doesn't have the boxing skills of Jack Catterall. Again, as you look at the Josh Taylor fight, where Taylor's active, right, Taylor's active. Taylor lands more than 40% of his power shots. Just look at the idea that Taylor can't find Catterall's upper body. 
right? Could you imagine Catterall shooting this jab against Ryan Garcia? How would Garcia respond, especially when Catterall is very good defensively and would know that Taylor's main punch is a left hook? Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Even with this win, Jack Catterall is underrated. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.